right. OK, hi. Uh, has anyone here worked with GraphQL? I just wanted to check before I go in. So a few of you. Oh, that's good. So um, I'm just going to do a really quick intro for a couple of minutes. If anyone wants to talk about it in more detail, please you know, come grab me afterwards, and um, I can just talk you through the stuff I've been working on. So I grabbed the definition of the website. Uh, GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data in your API, gives clients the power to ask for exactly um, what they need and nothing more, and makes it easier to evolve APIs over time, and enables powerful developer tools, although I have no idea what they mean by that at the moment. So, But basically what that means is um, you can make requests to multiple APIs via a single GraphQL query, which can load your page a lot more efficiently, and you only need to get the data that you, you need. So no more requesting an entire user record from a say an open API, and then just grabbing the name, you just say, I want the user's name, or I want the user's email address. And that's a good reason to let your front end developers like you, because you're helping them make their job easier, and making their pages more responsive, because you only have a single request uh, going to your back end. So uh, the schema is built up of several types. There are some built-ins, like queries, uh, which is like basically the read and CRUD and mutations for creating, updating, and deleting. Uh, subscriptions for maintaining an active connection, usually via a WebSocket. Uh, it's not implemented in Perl, so I don't know too many details about the other implementations. But the example use case, that might be on Facebook when you're on a page and someone likes your post in real time. If you're on the same page, your like count will update. So, And then there's the custom uh, user-defined types, which I'll, I'll just go through in a quick example here. So. Oh, sorry, built-ins first. <laughs> There's only five built-ins, technically four plus ID, so they should be familiar and don't really need much you know, explanation. It's, it says the ID is not being human readable, but the examples I've seen people do tend to use it, but you're thinking of it as basically a primary key if you're thinking from RDBMS world. Uh, when you create your own types, there are three key ones you can use. Scalars, which you might, for example, use if you wanted a date time type, you can create your own. Enums, which they use all caps by convention. I don't think case really matters when you're actually using them. And then objects, which is where you get the real power. So the example on the right here, um, I'm saying there's a user type that has a name, which is a string, and the exclamation mark afterwards means it's required. Uh, and the age is also required, and the ad address is required in this instance. And the address would be another type that I would define. And underneath that, the last one I put for friends, is an array, which you can also use an exclamation mark either after the internal um, object to say it's required to be undef, not to be not be undef, or after the array to require the actual response. Uh, at the beginning of the schema, this is kind of hidden from most people, but you define what your query and mutation uh, types are. Don't change this. I don't know why they made this an option. Maybe there's a historical reason. I have seen some old examples where people have it as a different name. But generally, you're going to be looking at query types and mutation types when you're writing uh, your schema. So underneath the actual schema itself, here's an example where I've described a query called get user, and you send it a user ID, which is required, and it will return a user object. And then underneath, I've defined the user object saying it, it will return a name and an email, but the age is optional. But also, when you're requesting the data, you could say, I just want the user's name, or I just want the user's email. So you're you know, minimizing the amount of uh, data you transfer back to the client. So GraphQL and Perl, it, it's definitely a little raw around the edges. Um, I've had trouble with some of the code that hasn't been touched in four years. So I've been pinging the authors of the two or three CPAM modules that are out there. I've played with the plugins for Plaque, Dabs are two modulicious. They're all pretty similar in the way they implement. Uh, and I think the best way to really go through that is to give you a little example. So this is a very, very simple Plaque script. Oh, by the way, I wrote this today. And if I've made any mistakes, people who know GraphQL, please tell me afterwards. So the first thing I'm doing is defining my schema, which you would normally share with your front end team. So you're working up on the same page. The root value, I don't know why it's called root value, but it's basically um, just a map between the query names and then the code reference you're going to run to create the response that people are expecting. Uh, and in this example, I'm literally just returning a string. Uh, for more complicated examples, I'd be returning different data types. And if someone wants to talk to me later, I can just go through some of these examples I have on the laptop. In instantiating the app here, there's a thing called GraphQL, and this is a great query IDE. 
Uh, you load it up in the browser, and it lets you type in your GraphQL queries raw and test them and see if they work as expected. Obviously, you're going to want to turn this off in production unless your production is a tutorial site. But that has saved me so much time. Rather than writing like six-line curl commands, make sure I send the correct request headers, blah, blah, blah. This you know, makes life a lot easier. So to that end, can everyone see that? Good. OK. So that's the script that was from the previous thing. And if I start it with plaque up. So it's now running in the browser, which to avoid the, the troubles of a live demo, uh, I've already preloaded. So this is what GraphQL looks like. Uh, you can set query variables at the bottom here. You can set request headers, although personally I use a Chrome plugin for that. And then when you've typed in your query here, if you, if you play it and run it, it presents the data it's got back from the hello world command. And uh, hopefully you're very happy and you can just throw that into your client's UI and things are good. So that's it. I'll keep it short, and uh, anyone wants to talk to me about this in more detail, I have tons of examples on my laptop for more complicated responses with the user objects, blah, blah, blah. Give me a shout, or um, email me, or look at my non-existent website. So there we go. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>